Hey, hey Vsauce, Vsauce, Michael here. Hey, Demetrius, Levi here. Now, I like to be bold a lot, but being bold or loud doesn't necessarily mean standing out. Standing out does not equal loud. Let me say it again for the people in the back. Standing out does not equal loud. Well, patterns, bold colors, bold pieces, I love them, but they're not necessary to stand out above the crowd. Because look, if we're being honest with ourselves, most guys don't dress all that great, okay? But now with, you know, the big YouTube fashion titans out there, you know, they're always dressing fit, 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 fit. And so most guys got that down now. It's one of the most important, but do not worry, my friends. It can still be done. You can still stand out, even in a crowd of well-dressed men. And you use it and stand out by being subtle, by using details. Details matter, boys. And I know we hear, we see it all the time, you know, in a Instagram description, you know, details, details, details matter, gentlemen, details, details, boys. We get it, and it might seem overdone and so cliche by now, but it ain't wrong. I mean, they're right. They're absolutely right. It's the details that matter. Now, I know it might sound like an oxymoron to stand out by being subtle, but it actually isn't. Now, I liken this to food. You look incredible, but people don't know exactly why and what makes that outfit look so unique and interesting. Like herbs and spices in a good dish, the food is delicious, but you don't know exactly what makes that dish taste so good. But you know if that ingredient was gone because it wouldn't taste as good. And just as a chef would be able to tell you what that ingredient is that you love in that dish so much, so will a seasoned sartorialist be able to tell you what exactly about that outfit makes it so special. It's the same thing. Now, except there are two different methods to this in clothing, one being it may be a little hard for an amateur or the average person to be able to tell what makes it special, or it's that you see the details once you get closer to the outfit. But generally, these two things go hand in hand and intertwine. I cannot stress to you guys enough how valuable texture is. Mm, mm. It's what separates a filet mignon from other cuts of beef. It's the tenderness, the texture that makes it so interesting, valuable, and a joy to eat. And it's the same thing with clothing. Texture can elevate any outfit of any color, even a boring color like gray. Because let's, let's be honest, gray can be hella boring, especially if there's nothing to it, no pattern or anything. Except if there's something interesting to it. Like texture, for example. I mean, look at this. This is like very knitted, you know? It's got some nice texture to it. Multiple shades of gray, 50 shades of gray probably. Oh, I'm sorry for that. And otherwise, this would look pretty flat and pretty boring like gray can tend to look. And it's the same thing with these pants. Now, okay, I know these pants are extremely bold, okay? And I know that's not what we're talking about, but hear me out. Regardless, if these pants are just plain brown, navy, gray, olive, beige, whatever color it would be, it's the texture that really makes these pants interesting. And look at this. I got a flannel sport coat right here. And if I pop this sucker on right here, not only is this outfit nice now because of the color coronation, but its textures are phenomenal. And now if you combine it all together, I have been transfigured into texture heaven. Now, our love for texture doesn't have to just end in the winter and the fall. It can persist throughout the year, including the summer, with things like linen, which is essential for those hot, blistering days. And its texture and wrinkles are legendary. Your shirt can be linen, your pants can be linen, your suit jackets can be linen, even your shoes can be linen, which is very nice because you only get to see these textures up close, which makes it subtly interesting. Now, a lot of people do not like the texture or the wrinkles that linen provides. I don't know why you couldn't, but I respect that. That's totally fine for you guys. There's also loose knitted cotton, which is not only fantastic looking in a jacket or pants, but the loose weave will let air flow through, which is essential for those hot summer days. It's a win-win, guys. Just like a good apple bisque with its creme fraiche, contrasted with its candy pecans and Granny Smith apples, a contrast of texture, so can be said for outfits. The rougher texture of this outfit can be softened by the smooth silk of a 
piece of pocket square, which, surprise, surprise, can be bold, actually, because it's nice and small and diesel pelts, it's mostly covered. But we don't have to just stop at pocket squares. We can do the exact same thing with other accessories, watches, rings, lapel pins, you name it, you can use it. But just be careful not to overdo it because and depending on the aesthetic that you have, overdone accessories can be the biggest sign of an amateur. It ain't broke, don't fix it. But that doesn't mean that we can't put our own little spin on things like a chef would with food or someone with a cocktail, like uh, Count Negroni. He just changed the, the Americano a little bit. Instead of, you know, club soda, he used, you know, gin. And instead of a lemon, he used an orange. Let me spit that on there and, oh, look at that. So delicious. We can do the same thing with our clothing. You take something normal on any item of clothing and just spaz it up a little bit. Like a good button, which Craftsman's Clothing does so well. They have fantastic buttons that add a little bit of interest. Or even a collar. A collar is on oh, pretty much every polo shirt or button down shirt. There's variations of them, and that's what you should look at. Like this one piece collar, for example. It's really unique and interesting, but not so much that people are automatically just gonna know what makes that look so interesting. They'll just be like, wow, I really like that shirt. And they might have no idea why. And if you do, congratulations, you're one of the few. And you know what? So many people, way too many people ignore the collar. I see so many guys on Instagram with these crap collars and it's just, ugh, ruins the whole look. And so they say you can tell a lot about a guy by his shoes. Well, you can tell a lot about a fashion influencer by his collar choice. And the same can be said with your trousers. There's not a lot of stuff on pants that you can change up. They're pretty straightforward, except you can mess around a little bit with the waistband. And that's why Gurkha trousers are so amazing. They add so much character to the waistband, but without it, it's not like a big bright color where you can see it a mile away. It's more when you start to get close, especially if you have a dark color like navy black or something like that where you really only can notice it when you get up close. But it's that little extra mm, detail that makes them so unique and fun to wear. If all my pants for Gurkhas, I wouldn't mind at all. At all. Details are essential for developing your own personal style, whether that be certain textures, collars, buttons, cuffs, cufflinks, accessories, Gurkha trousers, or extended tabs, whatever it is. You definitely need to consider these once you get the basics down, because if you don't, then you'll just look like everyone else, and then you'll never know what you gravitate towards and what you like, but once you do, then you'll have developed your own personal style. Details matter. I've said it enough. I'm done. It takes me way too long to say a sentence, and now my stupid screen, come on! Almost got that on the shirt. Oh gosh, be careful. Hey, Vsauce.